Hello again from Juliet's World. Many moons ago, the late Colonel Prince passed on to me Miss Marjorie Wilde's Lhasa Apso photos and cuttings collection. It had been in the possession of his late wife Beryl, nay Harding, of Brackenbury fame. Clearly the two ladies had been on close terms, as there are some letters included in the book, and they began Marjorie Dear and finished Lots of Love from Beryl. Miss Wilde's affix was Cotsvale, and in the front of the book are some pages she wrote to explain the breed. These are undated, but must have been mid-1930s, as the Tibetan Breeds Association had already been founded, and World War II had not yet begun. I think the best way for me to pay tribute to this dedicated Lhasa lover is to read you what she wrote, while showing you some of her many pictures. I shall show them in the order in which she saved them. The Lhasa Apso, Its Points and Characteristics by Marjorie I. Wilde The Lhasa Dog, one of the oldest breeds in the world, was first known in this country as the Lhasa Terrier and was brought to England by members of Sir Francis Young Husband's expedition to Tibet over 30 years ago. The Lhasas imported into this country were mostly blue-black and white, or all-black, or grizzle in colour, and were generally altogether larger and coarser than the smaller variety, called the Golden Apsos, which were first brought over here by Colonel and the Honourable Mrs Eric Bailey in 1928. Colonel Bailey, at one time political officer in Tibet, was in a position to acquire the best specimens available, and it is due to their efforts that we have today the purebred type of the Golden Lhasa Apsos in this country. The word Apso means goat-like, and in general appearance this breed is not unlike the small long-haired goats found in Tibet. These two varieties of the Lhasa breed have now been amalgamated under the one title of Lhasa Apso, and their interests are watched over by the Tibetan Breeds Association in this country. Some years before the Great War, I remember two classes for large and small Lhasa Terriers being put on at the Cheltenham Gloucestershire Championship Show. Championships were then offered for the breed, and a number of very good dogs were exhibited. This championship status has at the present time been taken away from our breed, owing to these dogs almost dying out because of the difficult conditions prevailing owing to the war of 1914. But we hope to regain the championship certificates before very long, when we have secured the necessary number of registrations required by our kennel club. I had, in 1901, a very beautiful Lhasa dog. He was a perfectly marked blue-black and white. The black in a true Lhasa should be blue-black in colour, not the black and white of the Japanese Spaniel. I have never seen a better specimen of a Lhasa. He was most intelligent and clever, and lived to be 18 years of age. Had I exhibited him at that time, he would undoubtedly have been a champion. The dog's father lived to be 23 years old. One of the best dogs of the past was champion Rupso, winner of championships four years running, 1908 to 1911. He was owned by Mrs. E. G. Webster and is stuffed in the dog section of the South Kensington Museum. He was the first champion of the breed. The Honourable Mrs. McLaren Morrison, who has had Lassa's for 30 years, and Mrs. Alan Francis were two of the chief pioneers. Lasses are almost uncanny in their intelligence and are very long livers. They are late developers and they rarely acquire their full coat, beard or fringes until three or four years of age. They are also some of the cleanest and most companionable dogs to possess. Miss Wilde also explained what she considered the principal points of the breed, but its inclusion would make this video too long. However, I still have many photos of hers that you have not seen, so I shall do that up separately. Please let me know if it would interest you.